Father, we thank you. We bless you. The entrance of your word gives light. You are the source of our wisdom. Scripture says Jesus is both the wisdom of God and the power of God. Father, thank you for your wisdom that you have made available. And Lord, we receive grace to do your word in the name of Jesus. In this service, we ask you for hope in heaven. We ask that there will be healing in our hearts. We ask that you will lift burdens in this service. We ask that for someone in this service, you will hope on that person's heart. We ask, oh God, that you will bring your word and there will be peace. In the name of Jesus, you sent your word and your word deliver your people from their destructions. I speak against any form of sickness in your body. I speak against any form of sickness in your career. I speak against any form of sickness in your relationships. I command healing in the name of Jesus. You are whole. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Are you happy to be in church this afternoon? Go ahead, put your hands together. Let's celebrate Jesus. You can do that better. Celebrate Jesus. Amen. And once again, help me appreciate our GIST partners. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Once again, I'd like to welcome everybody to service this morning. Part of our worship to God is for us to appreciate God with our offerings, our gifts, our tithes. So it's time for us to give. Is that okay? Please, let's package our offerings. You can find an envelope in the pocket of the seat in front of you. If you're joining us online, you'll see a link there. You can click on it. Please remember from your donation, what you give regularly, we're able to do a whole lot of good as a church. Uh, we pay school fees, medical bills, we help families going through tough season. So please give generously. Uh, please remember to give to the Ruman Foundation, give to uh, the Love Home Orphanage. The account details are being displayed right now. Uh, please, if you're giving online, please be confident, be assured that our, our server will not store your card details. The details are safe. So give. Can we pray as we give? Father, we thank you for your blessings in our lives. You are the giver of everything. And from what you've given us, we are returning this. For anyone that might be going through financial stress, we ask, oh God, for a turnaround in Jesus' name. You are the one that gives us power to create wealth. And we receive that power in this service in Jesus' name. Thank you for supplying all our needs in Jesus' name. The ushers will come with the baskets. You can drop your offerings there. I'd like to continue the series we've been discussing. Throughout this month, we've been talking about blossoming in marriage. And this morning, I'd like to title my short exhortation, Unity in Diversity. Unity in Diversity. Please, let's read together from our text from the book of Psalm, uh, Psalm 133. I read verse 1 to 3 from the New Living Translation. Psalm 133. Verse 1 to 3, the New Living Translation. How wonderful. Psalm 133. 3. Praise the Lord. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. I read. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard on, and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hammon and falls on the mountains of Zion. 
And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. There is an interesting story you will read in the book of Genesis, chapter 11. And there it was demonstrated that some people came together back then and they wanted to do something important, something notable. That story demonstrated the tremendous power that we human generate, that we humans generate when we pursue our objectives in unity. The people, they were one in their opinion, they were one in their perspective, they were one in their intentions and in their thoughts and in their actions. And they said that they wanted to do something, to build a city and to build a tower that would be monumental, that would reach to the heavens. And God responded. I mean, it was God's response that, that got our attention as well. God responded to their plans. And let's read that story together in Genesis chapter 11, verse 4 to 6, also from the New Living Translation. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Wow. There is power in this passage and I wouldn't want us to rush, to rush what is there. The first thing we notice is this. Humans agreed to do something. They agreed to do something, to build something monumental. And verse 5 says that God came down to see what they were doing. Of course, are you saying that uh, God couldn't see it from wherever he was? No. Saying that God came down to see it, uh, it is to emphasize that it got God's attention. God said, let's calm down. Let's see what they were doing. And with that, God confirmed the tremendous power we generate when we operate in unity. To be united means that we come together in our actions, in our thoughts, in our perspectives, in our opinion, to have the same mind about everything. And if you read later, if you read further rather, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9, the preacher was speaking there. He said, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. Two people will always be better than one. I've met some people, you know, they care so much about uh, their, their space. They care so much about their lives, which is fine. But, you know, God said it here that two people that are united will always be better than one. Also, Christ made us understand that when two people, two, when a couple come together and they are able to agree, he says that there's nothing they agree upon that God will not do. I also tell you, let's read that together. Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. Christ was speaking, he said, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Praise the Lord. And this, we can, it, we can apply it to a marriage. We can apply it to relationship. Wherever you agree, my Father in heaven will do it for us. Our foundation text describes our foundation text describes how unity releases God's anointing and blessing. That's Psalm 113 verse 3. It says, Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hammon that falls on, this, on, on, on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. So God created marriage for benefit of mankind, for us to blossom, for us to enjoy each other, for us to, to multiply, for us to be effective, for us to fulfill his plans for our lives. And I pray for someone here 
That dream for a happy home is coming to pass in Jesus' name. I said that desire for a flourishing family is coming to pass in Jesus' name. Perhaps your parents didn't have a wonderful marriage. Your case will not be like that. I say, God will give you a new testimony in the name of Jesus. And in case you are here, you are going through delay. I mean, you are experiencing delay in getting someone to marry. Most likely, God is working on the timing for you. And according to the word of God, he makes everything beautiful in its time. Your marriage will be beautiful. I say, your home will be beautiful in the name of Jesus. And if you, there is a delay, and the delay is coming from the devil, most likely it's because the devil is afraid of your next level. And in this service this morning, you will receive your victory over that delay. I say you receive your victory over that delay in the name of Jesus. So, from the, the story we read in Genesis 11, when they said they wanted to build, God moved again, moved against that ambition. God moved against that project. And are we saying that God doesn't like us to do something big, something monumental? No, God wants us to, to, he gave us dominion. He gave us human beings dominion over this planet Earth. So it wasn't that God didn't want them to do good things. But God moved against that project because that project was against God's intention. God's plan, God's intention was for human beings to multiply, to have dominion, to spread all over. But hear what they said in verse 4 of that Genesis 11. And they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. Can you see that? God's intention was for them to scatter to spread. But they were saying, this project will make us to stay here. We will deepen our roots here. That was why God scattered that project. I pray for someone that your vision for marriage will align with God's vision for marriage. I say your desire for marriage will align with God's program for marriage in the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, that we be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. As a believer, that should be your number one prayer point every time. Lord, let your will be done in my finance. Let your will be done in my career. Let your will be done in my marriage and in my relationship. So once you start a marriage relationship as a kingdom citizen, Make sure you prioritize unity and agreement. Once you start a marriage relationship as a child of God, make sure you prioritize unity and agreement. Be prayerfully sensitive to satanic interference. Many times, Satan wants to introduce conflict. He wants to introduce disagreement. And the moment... Husband and wife, the moment they are in disagreement, most likely they will not fulfill God's intention. They won't. There was a story of a man who in the morning was leaving home, himself and his wife, they had a serious altercation, misunderstanding. And the man got to the office, the woman was still at home. He came down and he analyzed the discussion. And then he, he called the wife and he asked her, was this what you're trying to say? And the woman said, yes. And the man said, I'm also, I was also trying to say the same thing. And guess what? The two of them, they were saying the same thing, but they didn't understand each other. And that disagreement, that misunderstanding was caused by the devil. The man apologized to the wife, and the wife also said, sorry. He got back home, and then they moved on. Praise the Lord. So many times, there, there is misunderstanding in the relationship. You always have misunderstanding because the two of you are different. Amen. Even if you say you married an angel and there's no angel or not. Amen. Is there any angel here? What we have is we have saints. Any saints in the house? You are not an angel. You are a saint saved by grace. 
So you are not perfect. There will always be misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. And sometimes the issue we fight over are not what our energies. The issues, husband and wife, they fight over, they, they are trivia. You know, some people can be very petty. You know, some, some couples, they fight over toothpaste. As simple as the toothpaste is, they fight over toothpaste. Don't press it from the bottom. I like pressing it from the middle. Issue as, oh, which best spread to use? The man likes plain colored bed sheets. The woman likes flowery or pattern bed sheets. So which one must we buy? Which one must we lay? White, no, don't lay the white one. I want the patterned one. Buy half yard plain color, half yard, <laughs> and so. Abi, <laughs> buy it, and you make two, right? So this week you lay this one, the man sleeps on his side. Another issue I've seen some couples fought over is which side, who will sit on which side of the bed? Ah, uh, you don't know. I want to sit here, I want to sleep here. No, this is where I sleep. I'm the man. It's not about being who is the man or the woman. All kinds of trivial things like that. And we just expend our energies. We expend our energies. There was one man who counseled a couple that were having misunderstanding. And while the two of them were talking with this man, he, 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 he perceived that uh, there is a spirit at work here, a spirit ca- causing the confusion. So the man prayed with them. He cast out that spirit from that relationship, and then he helped them to resolve the issue. And then this man got home. Out of the blues, misunderstanding started between him and his wife. Ah, and he don't know me. This is not my wife. Something, the man just excused himself, entered the toilet, and he said a prayer. Satan, I recognize you. You are that devil that I cast out from that family. And you think you are here. No, you don't have a foothold here. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. And the man came back to the sitting room. He changed his perspective. He changed his attitude. And there was peace. Amen? Peace. Somebody say peace. Peace. I pray for your family. Receive peace. I say receive peace financially. Receive peace in understanding. In the name of Jesus. So be sensitive to satanic interference. Scripture says, whatever is born of God, overcome the world. Whatever. Whatever is born of God. If you say your relationship, it was God that spoke to you, you are so sure about it, Satan will come for it. Satan will come for it. It happened in Genesis. Adam and Eve, they were joined by God. Amen? Satan still showed up in that relationship. So whatever... So you should be sensitive. Husband and wife, let's be sensitive. If there's something going wrong in our marriages, we should know this is not who I married, amen? This is not what a relationship of a believer should be. Then you know it's the devil. Paul, speaking to the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, I read from the Amplified Classic Translation. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, AMPC. He said, to keep Satan from getting the advantage over us. To keep Satan from getting the advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his wiles and intentions. We are not ignorant of his wiles and intentions. And also read from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26, the EMPC. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 to 27. It reads, when hungry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury or indignation last until the sun goes down. Verse 27, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to who? To him. You are hungry. As I said earlier, your, your partner is not perfect. Your partner will say something that will not land on the right side in your brain. Your partner can, it's, it, it, I do that sometimes. I do that. 
But here, Paul is advising, don't let the sun go down on your rats. Say, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Receive wisdom for this in Jesus' name. I say, receive wisdom for this in Jesus' name. Satan causes conflict in marriage to prevent agreement. To prevent agreement. So how do we maintain unity? How do we maintain unity in marriage? Number one, accept your differences. Accept that you're different. God said it, it is not good for man to be alone. And he created another person in the same class, but made that person different. A man is different from a woman. So, that is enough. Men, as they say, men are more logical, women are more emotional. By design, men have physical strength more than women, true or false. So all of these are differences. Accept it. Accept your differences. And celebrate your differences. Accept your differences and celebrate your differences. If you're married, can you look at your spouse now? Just turn. If you're married, look at your spouse. Assess her. Assess him. Keaton. Assess. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Assess. And you can see the qualities. The qualities. We should learn to appreciate these qualities. Amen. We are different. We should learn to celebrate this quality and appreciate this quality. There are different areas that a man is different from a woman. Temperament-wise, your spouse will not have the same temperament like you. Some people are very quiet. But you find out that if you are quiet, naturally you'll be attracted to someone that is not quiet. If an introvert, naturally you'll be attracted to a person that is not quiet. In fact, I don't advise. If I study your temperament, you're a quiet person, calm, and the brother you are interested in is, more, is as calm as you. Mm, red flag. <laughs> or you are a choleric as a guy. Go get her. And then this lady too is, is a boss lady. Go, go get her. As they say, you cannot have two captains in a ship. You may, you may be attracted to each other, but on the long term, we don't advise. We don't advise. So different temperaments. Another area for difference is family background. Family background. Look into that. Some of us, we are from a polygamous family. Some of us, we are raised by single parents. And you see that people that grew up in a polygamous family, their perspective to families is different. True or false? And someone that is raised by a single mom, he or she, the perspective will be different. So you are coming together. You need to know where your partner is coming from. Despite the fact that you, you receive revelation from God that this is your partner. This is the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. There's also, there will always be differences. Another area for difference is education and exposure. Education and exposure. Are you saying you mustn't marry uh, someone that is not educated? If you are here in this style, you are educated. <laughs> that is it. You have minimum or secondary school education. You are educated. True or false? You are. But the person is going PhD level, and this other person is staying at OND level. The gap will be too wide. Try to cover the gap. Amen? Try to close the gap. Because these are areas for uh, differences in marriage. Interest, too, and passion. Interest. I know of a couple. The husband loves action movies, thrillers. But the wife, Mount Zion. Any movie that they are shooting like this, she will be dodging the bullets. <laughs> she will carry her things, she will leave. I can't watch this. 
And it's like, as a couple, we should watch movie together. They are, sit, they are watch, trying to watch a movie together. And you know, this African magic drama, the man is like, no, this is not my thing. Okay, let's try it. The moment they say, they start shooting, she leaves. Interest. Some, some couples, I mean, you just have to find the balance around this. Your man loves football. But you, football, for where? African magic. Telemundo. Mm, Telemundo. Praise the Lord. Another area for difference is doctrinal, doctrinal differences. That some people growing up, the kind of church they grew up, everything must go through the prophets. If they want to buy pencil, they must consult the prophet. Everything prophet. But you are, you know, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. I don't need any prophet. And now you are married. Anything you want to do, ah, let's call prophet. <laughs> Differences. You need to understand where your partner is coming from. We're talking about unity in marriage. Accept your differences. That's what you're saying. Accept your differences. The another, another way of, of maintaining unity in marriage is this. Use your strength to serve. Use your strength to serve each other. All of us, we are a bundle of strength and we are a bundle of weaknesses. So, use your strength to serve your partner. You know your, most likely by now, if you're married, you will know your partner's weaknesses. Don't criticize your partner's weaknesses. God put you in his, in his life or our life to support, to be and help her in the area of your partner's weakness. Some of us, we are very organized. Use that ability to organize things to help your partner. Most likely, you'll be married to someone that comes in, he or she uses a towel like this and drops it on the bed. Do you have partners like that? Just look straight, you are that guy. <laughs> you come back like this, you remove the shoe from the sitting room, one socks here, and then the bottle of water, the cup is here, the bottle there, you finish eating, you leave the cup, you carry the plate, you leave the fork. As a woman, you are married, you are married. What God has joined together? Let no man, let no cup, let no spoon put asunder. Use your strength. Use your strength. Oh, the man, you are the man, you make the money. But your wife studied accounting and she's good at it. Let her manage family finance. Amen? Let her manage. Let's our strength come in to serve the family. So many are like, eh? <laughs> the two shall become one. One. My money is our money. Our money is. Uh, no, no, no. That's not scripture. <laughs> our money is our money. His money is our money. Some men are very traditional. Some men, they feel like I'm the man. Or coin like that. Hmm. Continue. Continue to struggle. You are one. The two have become one. One in their finances. One in their understanding. One in everything. One vision. God, we grant someone here deliverance. Amen. There's someone here, you are, you are wondering, you don't want to shift because your family will talk. Jesus said a man shall leave father and mother and be joined. Be joined. Obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. Use your strength to serve. Use your strength to help your partner in their areas of weakness. As a man, you have the physical strength. Don't let your wife be the one carrying cooking gas, 12 kg. Is she building muscle? <laughs> Carry it. Don't let her ask you. 
You are there, cross your leg, Nepal took lights. Go and put on the gem. A woman shouldn't be the. Praise the Lord. You know, and don't criticize your partner's weaknesses. Don't. Don't criticize. As you know, Pastor told us last week, getting a PhD in criticism will only tear down a marriage. We only tear down the relationship. Forgive your wife or husband. Don't criticize each other. You know, Paul, I mean, Jesus advised some people. He said, before you remove this, the, the, the speck in your brother's eye, he said, the pole, the log of wood in your own eye, remove it. Remove it first. So as a man, you have your issues. As a woman, you have your issues. Don't focus on your partner's issues. Use your strength to help them. Love shows mercy. And those that show mercy also receive mercy. Be merciful to each other. Be compassionate to each other. Use your strength to serve. As we begin to close, another area to maintain unity, how to maintain unity is this. Listen to understand. Learn to listen to understand your partner. As human beings, our differences influence our communication and create opportunities for misunderstanding. Our differences. We always influence our communication. Just imagine that your wife or your husband speaks a different language and you need to learn that language through listening and practice. Through listening and practice. Depending on which culture you are from, you know, I grew up in Ibadan. And the area of Ibadan I grew up, I went to a public primary school. They taught us English language in Yoruba. They taught us mathematics in Yoruba. And you know, I'm Ibadan, but my parents, my dad's from Ekiti, so I claim both states. But today, let me claim Ibadan. Ibadan people, they can yap, true of us. Ah. Uh, when you yap them, they tell you that is not growing on their body. They yap you back. They are at home for you anytime. Sarcasm, natural. Natural. They want to ask you whether you are okay. Can you imagine they ask in Yoruba? I won't say it. <laughs> this is only grand. <laughs> so you need to know where your partner is coming from. And pick the message in what they are trying to say. Listen to understand. You find out that even men, you know, a typical man will communicate most times to give you fact, information. But a woman, most times, will communicate to pass emotion. Imagine you're back from work. As a man, you're tired. Your wife, too, is equally tired. And she asks you, honey, how was your day? Most men, fine. How was the meeting? It went well. How was the presentation? Nice. That, that, so you have summarized. But ask your wife. How was your day? Mm. Then she starts from what happened when you dropped her in the office. 7.30. And when she got to her desk, and who didn't greet her? And then she will tell you every, the details. She will tell you the time she took lunch, how she forgot a spoon in your car. And then later how she bought pepper meat around 4 p.m. As a man, you'll be asking, which one is my home? <laughs> True of us. But you need to understand that is who a woman is. But those of us that are still single, guys, learn no. Learn no. And sometimes, some of us, even relating with our siblings, some of these things have been coming up. But you're just shrugging it. Yeah, my wife will not be like that. Your wife will be like your sister. <laughs> 
Your husband will be like your brother. You put your things in the fridge, they will eat it. Ah, don't worry. <laughs> if your brother is bad, it's a different thing. But your brother will, your brother will get on your nerves. It's natural, true or false. It's part of it. Men are different, women are different. Temperaments are different, upbringing are different. You know, <laughs> got married, start to eat. Let's say most of them you are eating Amala, and they will do. And then to serve me, I'll take a small portion of Amala and I'll mix it with the, the pepper, and they will do. That's how I eat. My wife, she gets her own, she will turn everything. <laughs> Then I'll be like, who eats like that? <laughs> then she look at me, who eats like this? <laughs> You're not enjoying the food. <laughs> you eat your heat, I eat my heat. <laughs> Differences. Listen to understand what they are saying and where they are coming from every time. Where they are coming from every time. Stephen R. R. Covey gave us an advice in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He said, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Seek first to understand and then to be understood. To listen to our partners, we need to be patient with them. Patient with them. And give them attention. Give them attention. Your partner is talking to you Instead of you listening, you, you are preparing your response. Some of us are guilty of that. We want to win every argument. This is not a law. This is not a court. It's between you and your partner. If she wins, let her win. Amen? If he wins, let him win. The two shall become one. If you are not married yet, Practice these principles in all your relationships. Practice them. Your friend is talking, listen. Your colleague is talking, listen. I pray for someone that this season you will meet that man. I pray for that woman you will meet that man this season. I pray for that man you will meet that woman in the name of Jesus. God will open his eyes. Wherever he is, God will direct him. Wherever she is, God will direct her. And there will be a miracle of connection in the name of Jesus. And I pray for families that might be going through turbulent season. I pray for peace of God. Peace of God. For that family that the, the issue is around finance, I prophesy prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Open doors. In the name of Jesus. Miracle of supply. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Can you just go ahead and thank God for your partner? And you are single, just go ahead and thank him for your partner ahead. You're single, just thank God. I know the plans you have for me, they are good plans. Good plans to bring me to an expected end. They are good plans. Lord, I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for the man you are preparing for me. I thank you for the woman you are preparing for me. Wherever they might be, Lord, bless them. Lord, lead them. Wherever he might be, Lord, lead him. Wherever she might be, Lord, lead her. Lord, lead me as well. Lead us. This week, let there be divine connection. Divine connection. Divine connection. Let there be divine connection. We give you praise, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. I want to take a moment to pray for someone. You are here in this service. You know your relationship with Jesus is not the best. Your relationship with God is not the best. You are not saved. When you were saved before, but something happened, you pulled away from God. I want to say this afternoon, Lord, I'm sorry. If you're that person, can you just put your hand on your chest? All head bow. Just put your hand on your chest. God wants to lead you into purpose. If your hand is on your chest, can you raise the other hand to God? 
Thank you. God bless you. Just raise the other hand to God. Raise the other hand. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Can you say this prayer with us? Say, Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Father, for salvation in Jesus' name. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for these people you have drawn to yourself. I ask that you write their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. I ask that you lead them to know you. And I ask that you lead them into their purpose. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, I will just give you a card. Help us fill that card with your details. And you can drop that card on your seat or you can give it back to them after the service is over. Church, can we put our hands together for these people? You can do it better. Scripture says there is joy in heaven even when one sinner comes back to God. If you join us online, thank you. We said that prayer with us. A link. Uh, they must have dropped a link in the chat room there. Please click on that link and give us a detail. We'd like to send you some materials that will help you in your relationship with God and to help you grow and to know more about this dark Christian center. We ask that you, if you have the opportunity, join us here at the at this dark Christian center or you can find a Bible-believing church to attend. God bless you in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed in this service? Let's go ahead. Let's appreciate Jesus. Let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Amen. Starting tomorrow, the Daystar Leadership Academy uh, is presenting the Advanced Certificate Program. And this time around, uh, they are focusing on business management skill. That is the module. So please, if you have attended the basic leadership course, plan to attend this. Um, the, the fee is very, very small. It's more like a giveaway. But you're going to learn a lot, a lot, public speaking. Um, you're going to learn a lot. Uh, starting tomorrow, right here at this facility. For you to register, please go on to their website, dlaonline.org. Go to their website, dlaonline.org. And it's going to be a hybrid version, meaning that you can be at, the, at your home, in your office, and you can be a part of this session. And if you know someone that uh, you've been praying for, for the person to grow in his or her career, you can send the link to them to be a part of this training. God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Come next Sunday, something is happening in our service, all over our centers. What is that thing? It's this Children's Day celebration. Come next Sunday. So please bring the children in your neighborhood, uh, the teenagers in your neighborhood, to be a part of this as we celebrate the gift of children in all our services. God bless you. Can we rise up? Can we rise on our feet? Can you get up on our feet as we close this service? Just go ahead and appreciate God. Bless him. Appreciate him. Can you prophesy into your week? The Lord this week, I walk in wisdom in my relationship. I walk in wisdom on my job. I walk in wisdom, oh God. I walk in unity. I seek peace. I seek unity. As you go, the Lord goes with you. His grace goes with you. You walk in victory. The lines you fall onto you in pleasant places. The work of your hand is blessed. The Lord sustain your head supernaturally. No evil will come near your dwelling place. Your water is blessed. Your bread is blessed. You shall be the head throughout this week. You will not be the tail. You shall be above holy in the name of Jesus. Your home is blessed. Your family is established. And for that single person, the Lord is bringing you across the, your partner in Jesus' name. There will be a miracle of connection in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.